we were on tour with Biggie, with the whole crew, the whole bad boy. And we did a tour. And me and him always talked about music all the time. He always talked about how he wanted to work with me. Obviously, I was a fan of his, and I wanted to work with him. So when it came time, you know, they reached out. And the crazy thing about that record originally, because I had the um, I had the beat and I had the chorus and everything, but originally Next was singing the chorus. Oh, wow. I had Next singing, the, yeah, I had Next singing the chorus when I presented it to him. And when I presented him, I had Next singing the chorus. And I told him because I was just like, yo, we got this whole thing going on with this East Coast, West Coast and this thing or whatever. Imagine if Biggie mentions, because Tupac had just passed. Right. So I'm like, imagine if he squashes this and mentions, you know, Tupac in this or whatever. He didn't, but that's how I presented it to him to at least try, you know, and he didn't, you know, but. You know, he did it his way. And when I heard it, he he killed it. I was, I mean, obviously I knew he was gonna kill it regardless. But that is, you know, me and my just just being weird and just try I tried, you know. Mm, mm, no, <laughs> but no. I tried to get him to um, you know, at least, you know, mention the whole thing of Tupac. Cause like I said, Tupac had just passed or whatever. I tried to get him to do that. And I'm not saying that he didn't want to. He did he just did the song his own way. He mentioned his own friends and his his people that had passed, his personal people. Or whatever, which he killed it. So I was happy. And then they um I know it was kind of even rough for um for next and for RL because RL actually went with me to the session when 112 did it. <laughs> oh wow. Yeah. <laughs> RL, yeah, I took her with me. And he was just like, Why'd you take her with me? He's like, yo, do you really have to do that to me? Like, not only did you be like you take me off the song, you bring me to the session to take me off the song. <laughs> I was like, I warned you before we went that that's what they was going to do. Did you want to come with me? He's like, nah, I'm just messing with you, though. But yeah, RL was with me. So as you said prior, you know, you pitched the idea. You wanted to get big to, like, you know, mention Tupac as a way to, you know, form a truce. Now, I want to carry on on top of that, right? Of course, you're from New Jersey, and that's on the East Coast. During the being in hip hop at that time, what what was going on between Biggie and Tupac? What was that energy like for you, as a person working in the industry? What can you recall? I mean, I only saw it from the outside. Whatever I saw, you know, like just like you guys, I ne I never saw nothing firsthand. I mean, not necessarily between them two, but you know, I'm talking course. about overall period, like like okay. overall period, like yeah, I just never, you know, like. I'm not really like a party guy or really go out too much. So I honestly, I just, I never, I never got a chance to be mixed up in it, to be honest, like seriously, mm -hmm. I never, I never saw it. I mean, it's, you know, when you were, when we were on tour with Biggie, it was always positive, always fun. Same thing before Tupac passed. You see him or be with him, always positive, always fun. It was never no back and forth. It was never nothing, mm -hmm. you know? So, I mean, I never got to experience any of it or well, see it. Or feel it, or feel it. The only thing I felt that was even remotely close to it, the only time I got or, or got anything that, that was Bobby like that was when we I, I was at the Source Awards when that stuff was going on. I was there. Oh shit! That time when um when Suge was saying uh, all up in the videos and all that, <laughs> like yeah, 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 like nah, like seriously, like that day and that you felt it in that building that day. That's the only time I was around something or or even remotely close to something like far as the East Coast, West Coast that day. I, w I wonder what who Shook Knight was talking about when he said all up in the video. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I, I think I wonder, much I wonder, I wonder. Pretty much now. <laughs> no, Diddy. <laughs> all right. Do you know, I saw a drink jam interview that he did and he said, oh, I thought he was talking about Jermaine Dupree. And I was like, really? Oh, no, no. <laughs> he came up on the stage that he came on the stage right after he said it and said, I'm the person he's talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah he said it straight up. He's like, yo, oh, I'm the so, person that they're oh, talking he, he, about. On, yeah. on the Dream Champs, he said, should Knight said tell him? He was like, Man, I was talking about uh Jermaine Dupree. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, right. yeah, 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 yeah. That that was wild, man. That was wild. But that was wild. Yo, that was a wild night though. Like everybody was in there, like just whew. People started leaving. It was just, it was just crazy in there. Like you could feel the energy in that building that night. Man. Oh, it was the South too. 
That's, uh-huh. that's what Dre said. The South got something to say too. Yeah, yeah, that's when Gray said that. Yup, that's when Snoop got up there and Snoop was like, y'all ain't got no love for oh. Dr. Dre and, and Snoop, Snoop Dogg. Dogg? Like, yeah, yeah. Yup, yeah, yup. Like, and also, was... also DJ Quick did that diss track on MC8. <laughs> yeah, yo. It was a lot going on that yeah, night. You was man. there just I, chilling? And it was crazy because I was there, I was actually there with Chris Webber. Me and Chris Webber was there uh, together. The basketball player, Chris, Chris Webber. And producer. Yeah, and producer, oh. yeah, yeah. Right, but I yeah, just... like um, I, he, I used to hang out with him all the time, and I, I actually showed him how to make beats and mess around it with the with the beat machine and all that and do stuff. I was yeah. gonna ask that. He got one of my favorite Nas records. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that must have been an awkward situation to be sat there at the old show and to have all of that going around, man. That Shit. was wild. <laughs> oh boy. So, so, t- about it now. What'd you say, T? I said that's probably why there's such diplomacy about it now. Let's just leave that day in the past, everyone everyone thinks. Yeah. <laughs> the tension was so thick it could start yeah. being rough today. <laughs> yeah. LA, LA Cam, do you want to say something before we go on to the next one? Yeah, yeah. Um pertaining to like, you know, beef and whatnot. Like being a producer, getting caught in the middle because we previously had, uh, you know, Easy Moby, who we spoke to about this, something similar. Um, would you ever tell an artist as a producer, like, yo, this, I can't really be associated with something that you're saying in a record that could be a shot towards another artist that you have worked with or haven't worked with? Right. Yeah, that's a tough one, man. Like, you want the artist to be, you know, express himself and be artistic and do stuff. But what you don't want to do, especially when you're neutral, is be, you know, kind of jammed or thrown or thrusted in the middle of something that you have absolutely nothing to do with or know nothing about. You know, so, you know, when if it does happen, I mean, I think you got to, you know, just figure it out. But I've always thought about that. And always you just said that like, dang, if I did a beat and somebody was straight dissing somebody on my beat, like I guess like if you want to say if 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 you if I was mustard and you know Kendrick did, took my beat and did what he did to Drake on the mustard beat, it's just like dang, what 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 would I say? Like, would I say nah I must I mean Kendrick, you can't use it? It's like dang. <laughs> but it's yeah, I I don't know, man. Like I think that. I don't know, man. That's a tough one, man. That's a tough one, you know, because you don't want to, yeah. especially, you don't want to be thrusted in the middle of somebody else's issues like that, you know. Uh, that's that's a fact, man. And yeah, of course... it, it, it sucks even more. Like if it's like a like a bigger artist, you know, you know, yeah. like I really want to work with this person, but you know, man, what risk? And, right. And you, and you know, sometimes by saying that you don't want to be associated. Some people might perceive that as, oh, you're picking a side, you know? Yeah. Right. Or, 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 or what, what are you scared or whatever? It's just like, no, mm. dude, I just, I don't have nothing to do with it. You know, like, mm. like, dude, I don't want to be thrust in the middle of something I don't have nothing to do with. I don't even know what y'all issues are. I mean, and I'm not saying it's not valid, but I just don't want no parts of it. Mm, mm. And at that part too, and, and even with that, it's it's tough because it's like, you know, if you got an opportunity for 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 X for artist X, and you finally get a record on artist X, and then you thrust in that scenario, and it's like, dang, do I really get in the way of or a chance losing this opportunity to work with art artist X now because he this, you know, artist you know Z? It's like wow. But you're in this fuck. I'm not about to get in between other niggas' shit. I got I got my own shit going on, and nah. nah. 